Okay, we've got a box of anime. I don't remember what it arrived this week. Or rather, what shit. It's in the port stuff did arrive, though. things okay and then all these things also arrive so let's begin with these two things this is the wonderful wizard of oz um i think there's been movie versions of this release this was discotech's release of the f something 50 something episode tv series uh, i'm not seeing anything on the back saying for certain maybe it's in this wall text Oh, well, the important thing is this is the TV series version as opposed to uh, the movie version. And that's why I had to pick up both the DVD and the Blu-ray version. Even though I had the, the DVD version of the movie version of the something or the other. I think that's the way it works. Maybe I'm rem misremembering. Hmm. I don't remember which books. Oh, look, this is right there. 52 episodes on six discs. Hmm. I don't know. Worst case, if I already had this. I'm pretty sure I didn't have this uh, TV series version. Which I'm kind of interested in. I like the artwork, or rather the character designs. It's... I don't know. There's some old stuff that just look neat and curious. and. If there's anything that makes these more likely to be watched, is I think these are dub only. Like if you look here, it's only got the English audio, no subtitles. Which is better than nothing. And so this would be good to have on in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Maybe it would be good. Maybe it's not that great of a series. That's why the movie version exists. It doesn't change that I want to see the TV series version. But it also doesn't change that it falls on my foot. Foot, foot, foot. Uh, Blu-ray. Also, that. That's region A. I guess if they're not that high quality video, that makes sense. Look at that, 52 episodes on one disc. This is almost sounding like a Japanese bootleg if it wasn't that it was discotheque. And I can actually kind of see this because, you know, sometimes you don't need to upscale the episodes or something. So if this stayed in its normal low res stuff, you could easily fit that on one or two count of pretty images. Oh, there's. Something familiar in the background there. I want to look at the images. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Let's just take this out to take a look. I think that's the same as something on the image in the back, maybe, was it? Or was that in here? I don't remember. I don't, I was, to be honest, I'm just kind of zombieing through this. Next up, we've got second half of Endride. Which, I don't know. I, I kind of remember being kind of meh with it. Kind of vague with some of the reasons why. Oh, yeah. It didn't really understand some of the names it was playing with. I think. Oh. Images, images. Blu ray part one, part two. DVD part. Oh, yeah. Okay, these both say part two, that's Blu-ray one, that's Blu-ray two. 
guys noticing this, I'm like, wait, that's part two and part two. And I wasn't processing that the images were different, and that that's DVD one and that's DVD two. So you can see you reach an A. It's got an English dub. Maybe I'll finish the series, I don't know. I think there was a DVD version of this already released, and then I have a Blu-ray. No, this is a Blu-ray and DVD release. It even says it right there, Blu-ray DVD combo. Hmm. Well, let's see. We've got Blu-ray. We've got DVD. Something else on the inside, but taking a peek at the back, we see it's region A, and I notice it's got both dub and sub versions. Interesting. I don't remember what I have here. I don't have Chihayafu Limited Edition, which is interesting because I've been, I probably wouldn't have gotten this if it wasn't already in stock at Bright Stuff, so I kind of figured that meant that they're actually shipping this on time. They, of course, being a Sentai Filmworks, they've been releasing special edition version for a lot of sets, but those have been coming out a month or two later. Hence why I don't have Monster Musume yet, because I pre-ordered the limited edition. I'm like, fine, whatever. I'll just wait for it to come out. I don't think it has anything I specifically need as a collector. Blu-ray Season 1. Let's see, an English dub. Okay. And... She doesn't ring a bell. Usually I recognize something about the anime that get the premium edition releases, but is that them as younger kids? Is there are DVD versions. Okay, yeah, I already don't recognize some of this artwork. So they're like doing different artworks. DVD and Blu-ray version, which is what they do for these limited edition sets. Hmm. And it's just a background. A neat background. Doesn't feel like there's anything in here. Is there a season 2 to this anime? Yeah, there's nothing in there. I'm wondering if there's a season 2 of this anime and um, this will hold that as well. Which is nice. I don't know what the series itself, I'm guessing it's probably good. Come on, let's... I can feel there is something here that I don't think is going to get out of its plastic bag. It's probably postcards. They're, they're a pain to put back in, so... Uh, there's that. I'm not exactly sure what these are. They don't seem like your standard postcards. Like, they seem to be character themed. Oh, uh, look, uh, this is God's World Overall Creation. Okay, that's a cool sounding phrase. I've got a glossary. Pyrotech philosophy, whatever that is. Possibly a card game or something. Look at that stuff. Oh well, that's nice and quick. It's nice to get something in a big box though. It seems like it's been a while on account of the fact that they keep getting released so late. Oh well, here's this week's anime DVD collection update. Um, I guess I've been a little out of it this past week. I know last week I had to focus on the frozen yogurt stuff, and how did I do that with the DVD collection update? I don't remember. So I watched some Divine Gate. I'm not really sure how much. And I can kind of see what's wrong with it. I like the way they kind of set up some of their characters, but 
It seemed to get immediately distracted by this Arthur person, I think. And I call it a distraction because really the series hasn't given us much of a reason to feel excited to watch him per se. They set him up as a cool character, but I'm not sure if they set him up in a way where we're interested to see what's going to happen per se. I mean, I kind of look at him, I'm wondering, I compare him to things like Roy Mustang, and this Arthur person is, has all these people who are willing to throw their lives away for him, which kind of cheaply implies people wanting to follow, whereas Roy Mustang, what made him cool? I think they just came up with a cool power, and he was just a person who happened to be in a higher position, and whose goals happened to be one that other people agreed to aspire to. He wasn't necessarily just some, oh, we've chosen you to be our leader because you're so cool. He was just the one who managed to get that far. They kind of had other people with even more cooler abilities. So I don't know. I think of things like that. I can kind of see. I'd rather have seen more of what the main characters were, but they seem to just mostly set them up and, I don't know, again, got, get distracted by something else. Whatever. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, because I've, I've been exhausted. I've been playing Splatoon more than anything else. Splatoon 2. Ugh. And it's been frustrating, I guess. It's like, especially at certain times of night when people seem to be more remote and there's nothing you can do. You can shoot at somebody and nothing will ever hit them and they'll just walk through your ink, swim through your ink like it's not even there. And then hit you with one hit with the weakest weapon and pop you. It's been annoying. But I did finally manage to create two items with three full sub-ability chunks that are the same as the main ability. So, you know, those super focused items. And it's just kind of neat. Outside of that... <clears throat> Yeah. I don't know. I guess I watched more Bakemonogatari with a friend. We got through the second half of the series. I don't even know if I remember to say that we had started watching it, but we did. And it's great going back to it, the series. It's a, all, it's a fun series to rewatch as well. It's got all these neat things. We haven't even gotten to my favorite conversation yet. We've, we've gotten a little into Nisei Monogatari, but that one's not as divided into small chunks as Baka Monogatari, of course. Uh, I haven't talked much about the Steven Universe stuff, have I? I think I just finished Season 3. That's a, that's a neat show. It's not too goody-two-shoes happy or anything like that, but it's not too dark either. It's not too obsessed with trying to be cool, and it's not too... Um, out of it, I guess. It's this neat balance of a lot of stuff. And I, hope, I hope my brother's coming over tomorrow so I get to watch more of it. But if he's not, uh, more Splatoon 2, because I've got more perfect items to construct. Outside of that, programming Spring Boot stuff, kind of discovering that MPEG 4 streaming doesn't come natural to Spring Boot. I guess the main issue being that you really want to be able to support something called Accept Ranges, which in theory is supported in some ways in Spring Boot. Like maybe you can tell it to somehow use the default servlet for Tomcat, but Spring Boot is hiding most of that stuff, so I'm not even quite sure if it is or isn't. And if it is, then I need to figure out how to tell the servlet to do that. And I don't know how, and that's okay because. You know, there's a quick workaround that everybody links to. It's like, oh, I'll use this code somebody else wrote in 2017, no, in 2015. And, yeah, okay, I'm doing that for now. It's not like this is some big commercial project and I have to worry about that sort of stuff. I can worry about it later. It's a stand-in for whatever will finally be the final solution. Because for now, you know, it's more important to get tests written for the code. And I guess that's what I keep doing is I keep thinking I'm finished for the night and I'm like, eh, well, let's see if I can write one or two more tests. Because I really want, I like writing a lot of unit tests for my code to make sure if I have to change something, then it's going to behave how I want it to. And I especially want that with Kotlin because I'm 
still learning how to format things in the language in order for it to look better. Like instead of a series of assignments with if equals null, like you might stereotypically do in Java, you probably do the Elvis operator let. And the reason I'm doing an Elvis operator let is because I need to both, or rather I want to both log which problem caused the service to reject processing the thing. You know, did somebody leave out their login name? Did they leave out their password? Or did their user account not have those or something? You know, I kind of want to know where in the process something buggers out. So, of course, I want to log that and then return null. And, you know, it took a little while to figure out that you use the Elvis operator with let in order to do that. Why do they call it the Elvis operator? I can't help but think I read but forgot. Oh, well, I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm really babbling right now. Um, so, I should end this. Y'all have a nice week.